Hi there, uh, I'm here today to show you how to make some simple beads out of various pieces of rubbish that you'll have lying about in your own house. Um, my name's Amelia and I'm working with Rig Arts uh, with the Plastic Fantastic project where we're trying to find ways to upcycle and reuse, pla especially plastics that you can't just put in the recycling bin, so it's those hard to use uh, plastics. So I'm going to show you some of the materials we'll need and then I'll go step by step through making something of your own out of almost nothing. So various things that I've collected uh, to use today and show you are these very sort of crispy sounding sweetie wrappers, packets from crisps and all these sort of filmy packets. Now not all of these work and sometimes it can be a bit trial and error but what I found is you can give it a wee shot and, and see if it works well for you. You get an amazing range of colours, some of them are very shiny so this is really very good. Another thing we're using here is these plastic bottles. Now these are recyclable but we can use them to make something else and incorporate some of the harder to use materials with them so these are pretty good and another thing that we're going to use today is various bits and bobs like bookies pens that you find lying about all over the ground and this is a great way of just turning them into quick beads okay right some tools you'll need are things you might have lying about anywhere that can be purchased very cheaply from like a local hardware store it's got some small pliers now these have quite a pointy end, you can actually get even better ones that are like proper needle nose pliers, so look out for them. They were like £1.99 or something. A pair of scissors. I've got a pair of secateurs for some quite hard cutting. Obviously be careful with these as well. I've got a pair of very small chopping scissors that I love to use, which are for actually uh, cutting bonsai. I find them very good for getting in really small spaces and cutting little details, so it's a tip for me, I love to use them. I've got a couple of barbecue skewers here. These are made of bamboo. You can use ones for a garden pole or any sort of little skewer that you can wrap some of your beads around while you're making them. I've also got a lighter, use caution, and some normal tea lights. Okay, so the first type of uh, bead we're going to make is a wrapped, melted bead and we're going to use some parts of plastic bottles for this. These are just normal juice bottles and things like that. Uh, be very careful when you're cutting them up. The way that I find, let's just use this complete bottle. The way that I find best to do it is to carefully stab into the bottle and then cut around it. And then you can get nice panels that are already slightly rolled up. And remove any packaging. Cover. Well, actually, you could just leave some of this on. Let's do that. Right, use it later. So now we've got a piece, a strip of plastic bottle. I'm going to cut that. So I have a small rectangle here. And then with that rectangle, I'm going to make two beads out of this. I'm going to cut it diagonally across. Okay, so now we have two triangles. Okay. Then what I'm going to do, I'm going to take my skewer. I'm going to roll this quite tightly, and it can be a bit tricky, roll it quite tightly round the skewer so there's a hole in the middle. This is what any cord we put will go through. So we're rolling that tightly round, and then the small point is in the middle. I'm going to take my little pliers, and I'm just going to hold that so it's all held together, and then I can actually take it off the skewer. So then, this is a bit where I'm going to light the candle, this is a normal tea light, I'm in a very well ventilated room, even doing it outside would be optimum, I have to say, be very careful you don't lean over this and breathe it in for hours, take small breaks and be very careful when you're using this because some fumes can come off the plastic. Okay, so I have my tea light. And these are long nose pliers, so my hands are nowhere near the flame. I'm being careful, I'm just going to run that into the flame and back again. I'm not setting it on fire, it's not going up in flames. I'm just very gently sealing it. And what happens is the, um, the structure of the material goes from being quite pliant 
to becoming quite brittle and that's what means that the bead stays in that position. So that's the fundamentals of these rolled beads, but you can actually have a lot more fun than that with them. Okay, it's quite hot. Then I'm going to pop it into a little bit to cool. That's it cool already. And as you can see, it's quite, quite hard now because it's changed, changed structure. So that's our first uh, prototype done. Okay, so that's good as a prototype, but really this clear bead is quite dull. So I'm thinking of great ways to make it interesting and make it, give it some colour, give it some brightness, make it look proper bling so that it doesn't look like you're wearing rubbish around your neck. So the second sort of uh, idea that we're gonna go with is layering other pieces inside your plastic and letting it just protect them like a lamination process. So in that way we would have a piece of clear material that we're going to use to roll the bead in. But then I found something else. Now, I quite like the idea of going for a necklace where all the different beads were different barcodes cut off of different things. So I thought that might be a neat, a neat sort of little thing. So I've cut a piece of barcode off one of these crisp packets, silver on the back. You can use the silver side out as well, which looks really lovely. We'll do one of them in a few seconds. So, same process. So, I'm rolling with my piece of clear material from the plastic bottle. You can roll that and then I'm going to add my little teeny piece of barcode with the barcode out. And I'm going to roll that round as well. Now, I don't know how this will work. I'm hoping it might be quite nice. I might have them at different angles. And we'll see what it looks like. So, and I'm going to do the same thing. Right, on a variant of that, you can get some lovely uh, colours of plastic bottles. So you can utilise these. And what I'm going to do with this one is I'm going to use a piece of blue um, plastic bottle, which was from, I think, a detergent. I've cut this up and I'm going to use a piece of silver from a crisp packet inside it to give it the look of a metallic uh, bead. So let's have a look at this. And now on to another uh, technique that I like to use when I'm making jewellery. It's very quick, it's very easy, and it involves something that you see lying about very often in the street, and that is Faithfold Bookies pens, which I see everywhere, and they piqued my interest, and I started thinking, what can I make out of these? Basically, they are already a bead. They've got a big hole running all the way through them. The only problem is they're full of ink, so you do have to wash them. What I do when I find a bookie's pen is I very often pick it up off the street and I give it a wash and then I use a pair of pliers to pull out the little nozzle and then you basically have a bead and what we can do is we can chop this up and we can finish it off to make it a bit nicer and use it as spacers. Okay, a great way of adding some personality uh, or a colour scheme to these uh, clear parts from the plastic bottles is by decorating them on the inside of the curve, you can use, uh, I discovered Sharpies work really well, um, or you can use things like old, the ends of old nail polish uh, and paint some of that on on the inside because it will be sealed in by the plastic and it won't, it won't be touching the skin. So uh, I'm just going to practice with uh, using a Sharpie here. So what I'm going to do is just colour in this edge. So 
So we've been working away for a while now. We've gone through all the rubbish bags and we've made uh, a little bunch of beads that we'd like to string. I've gone for a kind of theme of blue, but obviously you've got your own favourite colours and your own different rubbish as well. So what I'm going to string these on today is just some fishing line. Now this is easily procured. Um, I have experimented with using recycled fishing line, but often I find that actually it degrades and your, your uh, necklace might break. So I, I'm actually using this. But it's very cheap, you get it in season, so I'm cutting a piece that's much longer than I wish the necklace to be because I'm giving myself room for tying it at the end. Now what here I have here is a little catch fastener. So what I'm doing here is I'm finding a tiny little seed bead and there's millions of them in here and what I'm going to do is I'm going to tie this to the end of my fishing line because the catch I've got requires that this has a little tiny knot at the end of it. Okay, so you can also string your beads depending on what size of hole you have. I find that the fishing line is really good because it's very thin and it's uh, you can thread them onto cotton, you can thread them onto wool or you can thread them onto uh, all sorts of things. You can get proper wire, you know. All sorts of things but this is why I like to use it's also nice with some of the clear beads because you can't see it through it and it makes it kind of look quite cool so what I'm doing is I'm threading on my catch and then I'm going to start thinking about the order of this necklace Okay, so I've been stringing for a while now and uh, despite everything I said earlier, I decided to go for a sort of asymmetrical, sort of jolly collection of stuff look. So I'm just going to add a couple more ones. There is. There we go. Lovely. And then I'm going to add my clasp at the end here. I've got a tiny little... So I put it through. And then I need to tie a tiny little bead into it and then I should have a finished piece which all made by my own hand and obviously when you're stringing these things up I think it's lovely to mix in beads you have lying about or you know to mix to mix uh, even fancy stuff with some of this stuff if the colours are right you know what's the point of it sitting about and not going to any use if you could make something that you'll actually quite like and, and you'll wear Okay, so that's just tie this end up. So that was just an introduction to some of the basics. And obviously, once you know that this is the way it works, you can start looking at other things with a view to making them into beads and just experimenting with colours and things that you like. I've got some other examples of things I've used. This was beads from a bag, the black ones. So they're rescued beads. And then this is little snips of... Uh, bookies pens with a tiny bit of I think this is a straw from a Toot Sweet. So there's another sample. This is using this is using some of our mould technique. This is a bit of a home bargains bag that's inside these ones and it gives quite a nice pop art kind of effect. So you can play about with the things that you insert within. Um, I think my idea that I quite liked was using all the barcodes actually if you try that it might be quite cool as well you get all sorts of different colours so there's loads of uh, games you can play with these things here's another one using some old pearls um, not real and some bookies pens other little pieces of tubing and stick basically anything with a hole through it here's another one with a lot of the bookies pens and some mother of pearl beads so it's quite nice I think to sometimes mix quite nice materials, natural materials with these very plasticky found materials because you can add, you know, you can add a bit of, uh, a bit of fun, a bit of colour. So this one I quite like, it uh, asymmetric, um, just as a sort of a, a, a dangling thing. And then we've got, this is a hanging basket that I've made using bookies pens and various other pieces of jewellery that were broken up. So it's, uh, it's from a pattern 
we get those shell hanging baskets that were very 70s. So I, I have lots of them and I just had a look at them and uh, worked out the pattern. So this is using fishing line as well. And so your, um, your pot goes in here and it's held up. It's held up nicely uh, when it's untangled. But yeah, so you can play with all sorts of different colours, um, different materials, different sweeties, different foods you eat. You know, let it be a reflection of yourself and uh, have fun with it mainly and happy experimenting.